Okay, I'm making this video to demonstrate the blue box circuit based on the 12F683 microprocessor, which as you can see on the circuit board is the small integrated circuit down here. We have a keypad that provides basically individual switch closures, closures for each one of the digits, and that's wired to the board. So on the board here, just um, for identification a little bit, we've got the um, integrated circuit, we've got a transistor to boost up the volume of the speaker a little bit. There's a ceramic resonator here that operates at 20 megahertz that takes the place of the uh, crystal in a regular microprocessor circuit. And we've got a 100 microfarad tantalum capacitor here that uh, provides a little buffering on the voltage. So if uh, the battery is bumped and momentarily breaks contact, it won't reset the microprocessor. Here that are, are the resistors that make up the voltage divider that allowed us to use a single pin on the um, microprocessor to decode all of the keys on the keypad as well as the single button for the 2600 hertz tone. So that's pretty much what we've got here. We've got a diode that takes the 6 volts from this very compact 6 volt battery I found at Radio Shack and drops that down 7 tenths of a volt to a voltage range that the microprocessor is happy with, typically about 4.5 to 5 volts. I've got a switch wired on here and I'm using an old earpiece from a telephone set as a temporary speaker until I get it mounted into an enclosure. So that's, uh, that's the setup. I'm going to put the speaker outside the range of the camera here a little bit to demonstrate so the camera picks it up. I've got a little toggle switch or slide switch rather here wired up to control the whole thing. So I'll turn it on and when it first turns on it powers up in manual mode and plays MF digits. Each key press produces a tone of a 75 millisecond length. The key pulse tone, which is the asterisk key here, is 120 milliseconds, a little bit longer because the old MF detectors required additional time to detect that, um, that particular tone since it was the first in the dialing sequence. So regardless of any of the duration settings on the box, uh, the key pulse is only always 120 milliseconds. This button produces, um, auxiliary button produces the 2600 tone. And that, and that duration is fixed at, um, is fixed at one and a half seconds duration, which is adequate for uh, procedure of most 2600 controlled trunks. Now, uh, there's also a MF or a DTMF mode, a standard touch tone tone mode. Now, to activate that, the 2600 button is held down and then the power switch is turned on. The unit plays a beep, and now if I play, if I press the buttons, I get DTMF or touch tone tones instead of MF tones. And uh, the 2600 still operates in this particular mode. If I turn the power off, back on again, it reverts back to MF mode. Now suppose I wanted to default on power up to DTMF mode. To do that I simply turn off the power, hold down the asterisk key, turn it back on, there's a tone to confirm the operation, and now if I power cycle, I turn the power off, back on again, we're in, we're in DTMF or touch tone mode and that will happen on power up now because the setting is now stored in the EEPROM or the flash, uh, the flash memory of the chip itself and that's persistent of course. So I'll uh, switch back to default MF mode. Now there's a similar function associated with the pound key. I can turn off the power, hold down the pound key, turn it on and now the duration of the individual tones is set to um, it's set to 120 milliseconds every time I press the key rather than the 75 I had before. So if you need a little longer tone duration, you can toggle between those two values. And that value is persistent. So I can turn the power off, back on again, and we still have the long tone setting. So I'm going to reset that to the shorter tone. And now we'll go into an additional feature of the uh, unit, which is the uh, dialing memories. When I first turn the power on, the unit will remember in, um, in memory the first 32 key presses that are pressed on the keypad. So in this case, I'll just key in a simple uh, MF sequence. I'll press the 2600 hertz tone. I'll press key pulse. 
uh, we'll dial directory assistance code 131 and then start. And then to store this, I'll press and hold uh, the one button for two seconds, which will initiate a storage in memory location one. And those two tones indicate a successful memory storage. Now there's a memory location for each one of the buttons on the keypad. So a total of 12 32-digit memories altogether. To switch into the from the manual mode to the memory mode, I will press and hold the 2600 button down for two seconds. It'll play 2600 and then play that low to high tone. And now I'm in memory mode. Now. Now that's 32 digits. I had pre-stored a memory location here, but let's play back what we just stored. There's the 2600, and then the key pulse 131 start. There's a fixed uh, delay after the 2600 tone to allow the, um, the wink back from the trunk. So that's built in and can't be modified. Um, I've got a few other sequences here. That's just 2600. Now, uh, the memories are capable of storing both MF and DTMF digits, but not within the same memory. So if I happen to be in DTMF mode when I typed in the first 32 um, key presses and then stored it, it would store those digits in uh, touch tone mode. So you can have a mi set of mixed memories. So five could have the dialing sequence that would access my project MF line, for example, which is 630-485-2995. In fact, let's do that. We'll turn the power off. I will uh, switch to um, MF or DTMF mode. I'll dial uh, 630-485-2995, and then we'll store that to uh, memory five. Now we'll switch back to MF mode. We'll dial key pulse uh, 131, start. We'll store that to memory six. Press and hold. By the way, when you're storing, it plays a tone, of course, when you press the button because it doesn't know you're going to hold it down for two seconds to store it. That digit is automatically removed from the storage, so that extra digit will not record. All right, now we'll hold the 2600 button down to switch to memory mode. And now if I press 5, we'll hear a touch tone sequence that could be used to dial Project MF. And if I press 6, we'll hear the MF sequence to dial the directory assistance number. And actually, I think we accidentally stored uh, the uh, key pulse 131 start in DTMF mode. So that's actually DTMF. And. Um, that's MF. So you can see you can mix MF and DTMF on, uh, in the memories, which is quite useful. Now you notice that these are playing back at the slower rate because I didn't reset back to the um, longer one, so I'll do that. Hold down the pound key at startup. I will switch to memory mode by holding the 2600 button down, and now we get the faster dialing rate. You can switch back to manual mode by another press of the 2600 button for a few seconds. So that's about it. It's quite simple. It's very flexible because of the memories and um, best yet, it's very uh, the circuit is very small and very basic. It just uses a very inexpensive microcontroller. Costs less than a dollar compared to the uh, 68 HC705 that I had used for a previous design that currently costs over 10 bucks and is very difficult to find, so it's a much more modern approach. Microprocessor is quite amazing. It's got 2K of program memory on it and it's got 255, 256 bytes of um, flash memory for st program storage. Of course, the dialing memories are non volatile. You can take the battery out and the uh, chip will still remember those. Uh, when you replace the battery, so
quite a nice little uh, operation. The tones are not quite as pure because they're being uh, generated by pulse width modulation techniques. So they're not as pure as uh, generating it from a dedicated tone generator or using a, some other types of techniques, but still quite effective.